Did Brian Laundrie advise his parents that he murdered Gabby Petito? Did the Laundries make arrangements to get Brian out of the country? Did the Laundries know what was in the press release, the statement made by attorney Steve Bertolino? Those questions I'll have answers to because I have the answers filed by both of Brian Laundrie's parents. Just filed. So we're going to take a look at the actual court document, the actual answers. What were the replies that the Laundries made to the allegations by Gabby's parents in the emotional distress lawsuit? So please do subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button. Hit the bell notification. Please do share these videos. And please do leave a comment or question. I want to know what your analysis is because this is simply my analysis, simply my opinion, and it's for education and information purposes. Okay, so in case you popped onto this channel, Gabby Petito's parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, are suing Brian Laundrie's parents, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, for intentional infliction of emotional distress. They are seeking more than $100,000 in damages. Why? Because Gabby's parents allege that Brian had advised his parents that he had murdered Gabby Petito and that the Laundries did not tell, did not provide any information to Gabby's parents as to her whereabouts or what happened to Gabby Petito. Gabby's parents claim that they had reached out many times to get information from the Laundries. Gabby's mom alleges that Roberta Laundrie blocked her on Facebook, wouldn't respond to her calls or texts, and that Gabby's parents allege that Brian's parents were assisting, or allegedly, all of these are allegations, were making arrangements to get Brian Laundrie out of the country. And because they withheld information, and because they issued that statement saying, expressing their hope, that Gabby Petito would be found and reunited with her family, that that turned out to be false, is what they claimed in their motion to dismiss, and that all of that withholding information and not providing information caused Gabby's parents severe emotional distress, therefore they're entitled to be compensated for the damages. So let's take a look, and this might be I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible, so please do leave your questions if you have them in the comments, okay? So first, let's take a look at the answer, the responses that we were given that were filed by Christopher Laundrie, and then we're going to look at the responses filed by Roberta Laundrie, Brian's parents, and we're going to look at the complaint, the amended complaint, what were the allegations and whether or not Brian Laundrie's parents admit or deny. And it's very interesting, you know, do, do, do they admit that they were advised by Brian that he'd murdered Gabby Petito? Were they making arrangements? Did they go on vacation? All of those allegations that were alleged. And I encourage you to look at the Gabby Petito playlist and also, which is a playlist of all the videos I've done on this case, on these cases, and um, also to, in particular, look at the examining the Petito versus Laundry lawsuit if you want to get up to speed on what they're alleging, what facts that they're alleging. Now, keep in mind that the judge did deny, the judge denied the Laundry's motion to dismiss the Petito's lawsuit. In other words, the judge found that there were sufficient facts to allege a cause of action sufficient facts that were alleged because the judge has to presume all those allegations you know that they were making arrangements to get Brian out of the country they blocked Nicole Schmidt from Facebook and texts and responding to calls they um Brian had advised him that he had murdered Gabby Petito they had gone on vacation uh to the uh I think it's DeSoto Park um etc okay so we'll, I'll go through this as much as I can all right so please do continue watching. It gets pretty interesting here. So let's take a look at what they admit and what they denied, okay? 
So first, let's take a look at um, Christopher's response, Brian's father's response. So this was filed on July 15th, a couple days ago. Here's the lawsuit. It says, Defendant Christopher Laundrie's answer and affirmative defenses. Now, these are the responses that they have to make to the allegations in the um, emotional distress lawsuit. Okay, so they have to respond as defendants to each one of these allegations. They need to admit or deny them, all right, and to put forth any defenses they may have, constitutional rights, someone else was responsible, and by the way, um, they do say that, you know, non-parties, they are saying we're responsible. Very interesting. Who are those non-parties? I'll give you a hint. Go look at the video I did on the witnesses, the witness list, the Petito uh, Schmitz wit witness list video. Guess who's on there? All right. So it says here, defendant Christopher Laundrie, buying through undersigned counsel, blah, 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 denies all alleg allegations of the amended complaint not expressly admitted. You can go ahead and read through this. I just want to get to the parts that I think are pretty interesting. Um, he's saying these responses are only on behalf of Christopher. Okay, answer number one, he says, without knowledge, therefore denied, denied. And just, I'm giving you the flavor. I'll go and we're going to go look at the amended complaint. But I just want to show you how they answer, what the answer looks like. So you can see it admits some of it, denies some of it. Without knowledge, admits, denies, um, it admits that Brian and Gabby were engaged to marry without knowledge as to plaintiff's opinion. This is relating to the cordial relationship between the parents. I'll get to that. Without knowledge, without now, they get to 18, they denied. So if you see some are without knowledge, but then they're denying. So they're claiming they didn't know anything, right? They didn't have any information, no knowledge, therefore they're denying. But when they say they deny, they're saying they deny the state, the allegation, okay? that they have enough knowledge to deny it. So we'll get to that. They admit that Brian returned home to his parents, but they deny the other aspects of that allegation. Okay, so just showing you some of the stuff they denied. They denied that they went on vacation to DeSoto Park, so I guess it wasn't a vacation. What was it? Um, deny, 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 deny. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna look at, we're gonna look at the affirmative defenses. So Christopher Laundrie is demanding a jury trial. He's asserting these defenses. Number one, failure to state a claim upon which relief may be granted. The amended complaint fails to state a claim upon which relief may be granted and does not allege sufficient facts. Well, the judge found otherwise, right? Because the judge denied the motion to dismiss. The judge found there were sufficient facts, but they're going to go ahead and they can allege this. They're saying that Christopher Laundrie had no duty due or owing to the plaintiffs to do anything, right? to any to respond to any any of the requests from Gabby's parents. And they're also saying Christopher Laundry's conduct was not outrageous. Their second offense, it, it was the illegality of third parties, not the Laundries, not Christopher Laundry. Who are these third parties that caused the alleged damages? Take a look at that video on who's on the witness list. Third defense, none, they're saying the actions of non-parties. That means people who aren't named in this lawsuit. So it's not the laundries, it's someone else. We're the proximate cause of the alleged damages. Who could that be? Fourth, absence of intent and malice. They're saying the conduct on behalf of Christopher Laundry was neither intentional nor willful and lacked malicious intent. And by the way, this is pretty much the same thing that's in Roberta Laundry's answer, but I'll show you that in a second. Fifth offense, they're saying that the conduct of Christopher Laundrie confirmed with all state and federal laws. In other words, he didn't break any laws by maintaining his silence. Sixth offense, controlling law. They're saying that all defenses and presumptions benefit Christopher Laundrie. They're also saying um, that Christopher Laundrie can assert and invoke his constitutional rights. Remember, the right to remain silent, not, not be compelled to talk to anyone, not compelled to respond to Gabby's parents' inquiry. I mean, I know this is a terrible tragedy for both families, but legally it's pretty interesting, this case. At least it is for me. All right, so, and for you, because I see many of your comments and questions. Okay, mitigation of damages. They're saying that the plaintiffs, the Gabby's parents suffered no damages, and if they did, they failed to mitigate their own damages. Very interesting. And they're also, Christopher Laundrie is reserving his rights 
to amend the list of defenses. In other words, add additional defenses and or amend this answer, depending on what other information comes out. All right, so now let's take a look at, um, let's look at Roberta's real quick and then I'll get to the specifics of what they said. Um, so here is Roberta's. So again, Roberta filed a similar answer, but if you, a couple of these counts relate to Roberta in particular. In other words, one of the counts is that Roberta blocked Nicole Schmidt um, from Facebook and getting any responses to texts or calls. So again, Roberta uh, denies all the allegations except for those that she admits. You can go ahead and look at this. She's responding only on behalf of Roberta Laundry. Blah, blah, blah. You can see again, similar to what Christopher Laundry did. With that knowledge, therefore denied, saying they don't have information, so they're denying it, blah, blah, blah. You can see that she admitted, number six, we'll get to that, denies a lot, because didn't have knowledge. 18, she also denies, just like Christopher Laundry. 20, same answer as Christopher Laundry, admitted that Brian returned home. Same answer, and 23, she admitted that they went to DeSoto Park, it wasn't a vacation. Again, she admits the same thing, uh, or denies on 26 and 30, 31, 32, blah, blah, blah. I'll get to the specifics. I just wanted you to see this. Okay, her defenses, same. Same as Christopher Laundrie, failure to state a claim. Um, they didn't uh, allege sufficient facts to support a claim for emotional distress. Third parties caused the damage. Actions of non-parties caused the damage. The laundries weren't the proximate. There's no intent, malice, blah, blah, blah. You can go ahead and look at this. They're invoking, she's also invoking her constitutional rights. Um, she's also reserving her right to amend uh, the list of defenses and to amend the answer. All right, so let's look at the specifics about what they admit or deny. All right, so uh, number one, this action for damages exceeds 30,000. They both deny it because they don't have knowledge of the damages, okay? So generally, they're denying number one. Number two, three, four, and five, they are denying. Uh, they don't have sufficient knowledge that they're denying. I want to get to the ones that are interesting. They do admit to number six that Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie are residents of North Point, Florida, and their parents are Brian Laundrie deceased. So they admit that as a fact, okay? Number seven, they also admit that Brian Laundrie and Gabby were engaged uh, to marry uh, they admit to that, but they don't admit, it looks like, to the date of July, on or about July 2nd. Okay, um, I'm going to increase this just a little bit here. Uh, they deny a whole bunch here, paragraphs 8 on. So they're denying um, because they're saying they don't have knowledge of when Gabby and Brian left New York. Uh, they're saying... They don't know the personal opinion uh, relating to the cordial relationship that the Gabby's parents had, you know, as far as the plaintiff's opinion regarding what kind of relationship they had with Brian's parents. So they're saying they don't have knowledge of that. So they're denying it. They don't have knowledge of Gabby being a van lifer. You can go ahead and read this. Um, they don't have knowledge of Gabby calling her family almost daily. They don't have knowledge of the last communication between Gabby and her father, Gabby and her mother, blah, blah, blah. Gabby's age. Um, number 14, they are saying they don't have knowledge, so they're denying it, that it's believed that on August 27, Brian Laundrie murdered, so they're denying that they had knowledge of that. They're denying. And you can go ahead and read this. Number 18 is what I wanted to get to. They are denying this outright. Both Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie are denying this outright. That it is believed and therefore that on or about August 28th, Brian advised his parents. Both parents are denying that Brian advised them that he had murdered Gabby Petito. Both parents are also denying that on that same date that they retained, they spoke to attorney Steve Bertolino and retained, sent him a retainer. They're denying that. Outright denial. The rest of this, uh, 19, they're denying because they don't have information that Brian had sent text messages to Nicole Schmidt. They are admitting in paragraph 20 that Brian did return home. They're not admitting to the date, and they're not admitting that he was driving Gabby Petito's van. That's interesting. 
They're only admitting that Brian returned to the home of his parents. Paragraph 21, they're saying that they don't have knowledge, therefore they're denying, which I think is interesting. After this point in time, there was no contact with, between Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt on the hand. There's no contact between the parents. They're both, Brian's parents, are saying they don't have knowledge of this, therefore they're denying it. They don't have knowledge of contact with Brian, with uh, Gabby's parents. That's interesting. Paragraph 22, same thing. They're saying they don't have knowledge, therefore they're denying that Gabby's remains were found in Wyoming and that Gabby's parents were extremely distraught in attempting to locate. So they're denying that Gabby's parents were attempting to locate Gabby Petito. Is that what they're saying here? Paragraph 23, they do admit only as to that the that Roberta, Christopher, and Brian went to Fort DeSoto Park. They're not admitting that they went there on vacation. They're not admitting that Gabby's parents were suffering. They're not admitting that Brian knew that Brian that they knew that Brian had murdered Gabby Petito. They're not admitting that they knew where, brought, where Gabby's body was located. They're not admitting that uh, Gabby's parents were attempting to locate her. Interesting. Paragraph 24. In an effort to avoid any contact with Nicole Schmidt, Roberta Laundrie blocked Nicole Schmidt on her cell phone so that uh, neither phone or phone calls or texts could be delivered and blocked her on Facebook. They're denying, Roberta Laundry is denying that this is true, okay? She's denying that she had knowledge. So she's denying knowledge of this. Therefore, they're, uh, it's a denial. Paragraph 25, very interesting. The statement that was issued by Steve Bertolino, they are both uh, Brian's parents, Christopher and Roberta Laundry are saying that without knowledge, they have no knowledge, or without knowledge of this statement, therefore it's denied. So are they saying that they weren't aware of this statement? That they had no knowledge that Steve Bertolino was issuing this statement? They were not aware of the contents of this statement? Is that what this denial is saying? On September 14th, with full knowledge that Gabby Petito had been murdered, it is believed that they knew the whereabouts. They're denying. They don't have knowledge of this, so they're denying it. Christopher and Roberta Laundry, through their lawyer, issued the following statement. It is our understanding that a search had been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family, it is our hope the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with their family. They are both claiming, Brian's parents are both claiming that they did not have knowledge Therefore, they're denying this statement. Very interesting. Remember, in the motion to dismiss hearing, this is what the judge said. This was a statement. They, this was speech. And it was, uh, even though it was on behalf, uh, it was made on behalf uh, or by their attorney. Therefore, the judge found that the attorney being agent of the laundries, that this statement, and in fact, it says, um, it is our, that on behalf of the laundry family, right, the judge has to assume for purposes of the motion to dismiss that these allegations are true, that everything in here is true in this statement. Therefore, the judge found that there was speech by the laundries and, there, and also found that there was enough uh, uh, facts alleged to find that there was sufficient facts uh, to support a cause of action for emotional distress. Therefore, the judge denied the motion to dismiss. Well, here's the answer that's made by both Christopher and Roberta Laundry saying that they have, I guess they're asserting here that they had no knowledge of this statement being made by Steve Bertolino or the contents of it. Therefore, they're denying that what's, that this is true. I think that's what they're saying here in their answer. Paragraph 26, they're also denying. They're denying that they expressed their hope that Gabby Petito was located and reunited with their family at a time when they knew that she was murdered by their son was beyond outrageous. They're denying that they knew. They're denying that what they did was outrageous. Paragraph 27. Um, here's the letter that Gabby's parents issued 
to Christopher Laund uh, to Christopher and Roberta Laundry to Brian's parents. They're also both Roberta and Christopher are saying they had without knowledge, therefore they're denying this allegation. Are they saying that they never got the letter from Gabby's parents? Are they saying that they never got this letter where they're asking for help to find their beautiful daughter? We ask you, you put yourselves in our, in our shoes. We haven't been able to sleep or eat. They're saying, are they saying in their answer here that they never got this letter? That's why they're denying this. Paragraph 28, 29, they also deny because they're saying without knowledge, they deny it. Um, they have no knowledge that I guess that Joseph Petit and Nicole Schmidt implored them to tell them if their daughter was alive or where her remains were located. Are they saying that that never happened? They have no knowledge of that? Paragraph 29, Christopher and Roberta Laundrie instructed all con that all contacts were to be made through their attorney. Steve Bertolino, and he issued a no comment when asked about Gabby Petito's well-being. They're also saying that without knowledge, they're denying. So are they saying they had no knowledge that Steve Bertolino issued a no contact or that he was acting on their behalf? Is that what they're saying here? I don't know. What do you think? Paragraph 30 and 31, Christopher, um, let's see, while Joseph and Nicole Schmidt were desperately searching, for information concerning Christopher and Roberta Laundrie were keeping the whereabouts of Brian's secret. Both parents deny that, and it is believed that they were making arrangements for him. Both parents deny that they were making arrangements for Brian to leave the country. Paragraph 31, both parents deny this, paragraph two. They deny that they knew of the mental suffering of Gabby's parents. They deny that such mental suffering and anguish increased each day that Gabby was missing. They deny that they knew that they could prevent additional mental suffering by disclosing what they knew about or the well-being, the whereabouts or well-being and location of Gabby Petito. They're denying that they refused to do so. They're denying that um, they acted with malice and great indifference to the rights of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt. That's what a denial means. Okay. These were not, you know, without knowledge denials. These were out and out denials of these facts alleged in paragraph 30 and 31. They didn't keep Brian Laundrie's sec uh, whereabouts secret. They didn't make arrangements for him to leave the country. They didn't know about the mental suffering by Gabby's parents. They didn't uh, refuse to assist Gabby's parents. I think that's what that's saying. They didn't act with malice or indifference. Paragraph 32, they also outright deny that they exhibited extreme or outrageous conduct in their behavior. They also deny each one of these subparagraphs. They deny that they failed to advise. Gabby's parents that Gabby Patino was deceased. They deny that they failed to disclose the location of Gabby Petito's body. They deny that the family was taking a vacation with their son, Brian Laundrie, who had murdered Gabby Petito, while Gabby's parents were desperately seeking her whereabouts. They deny D. They deny blocking access to her cell phone to preclude Joseph and Nicole Smith from getting information. I think that relates to the count against Roberta Laundrie. They also denied that they issued a press release expressing hope, quote, hope that the search for Gabby, for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family, knowing full well that Gabby Petito was deceased. They deny that. They deny that they issued that press release statement. Jo Christopher Laundrie denies Paragraph 33 and 34. 34, he denies um, that he was a direct or proximate result of causing pain and suffering to Joseph Petito. You can go ahead and read this. Roberta Laundry denies paragraph 35 and 36 that is a direct result, um, direct and proximate result of uh, willfulness and maliciousness of Roberta Laundry. Joseph Petito suffered pain and suffering. Roberta Laundrie denies that as well. Christopher Laundrie, paragraph 37. 
He denies in 38, he denies that he was direct and proximate result, caused Nicole Schmidt to suffer pain and suffering, etc. Roberta Laundrie denies outright, paragraph 39 and 40, that she caused any mental suffering to Nicole Schmidt. Okay, so that's what we know in their answer. They weren't advised, both Brian's parents deny that they were advised that he murdered Gabby Petito. Both parents deny that they uh, made arrangements to get Brian Laundry out of the country. Both parents deny that they caused any mental suffering to Gabby, Gabby Petito's parents. Both parents deny the amount of damages, right? and more. So you can go ahead and take a look at that uh, amended complaint. You can look at the examining uh, the Petito versus Laundry lawsuit in the several videos I've done on the amended complaint and take a look at the witness list of who are those non-parties, who are the third parties that the Laundries, both the Laundries allege were the cause of the mental suffering, the emotional distress that was endured by Gabby Petito's parents. Take a look at the witness lists by both parties. Look at those videos. Okay, so I hope that vi this video has been helpful to you. I hope it made sense. <laughs> so please do leave a comment or question. I want to know what your analysis is. And please do hit that like button. Give me a thumbs up. And please do uh, share these videos and hit the bell notification. And please do subscribe. Please do support this channel by subscribing. Thank you very much for watching.